pedaling speeds or cadence can seem to go in trends depending on what the current professional riders are doing themselves. So if we look back to the Lance Armstrong era, well, he made high cadences on climbs very popular indeed. But if we look at one of his closest rivals, Jan Ulrich, who won the Tour de France before Lance Armstrong, well, he really ground it up the climbs and put it in a big gear. So it's completely different. And although they are both very controversial figures in the world of cycling now, it seems like they were both cheating so maybe that cancels each other out. Anyway, regardless, we thought we'd come to test things ourselves because the modern science seems to point towards self-selected cadence being the most efficient. So whatever you feel is best, probably is best. Simon behind me is currently doing our protocol, which is 10 minutes at a 6% gradient at 20 kilometers per hour. At the moment, he's doing 100 RPM, which is well above what he would naturally select. Then when he's finished that, we're gonna give him some rest he then goes at 80 rpm which is roughly about what he would do on a climb we'll give him some more rest and finally we'll finish with 60 rpm which is of course well below what he would normally do now we're going to do some testing in terms of the oxygen that he's consuming for each of the cadences also his blood lactate we'll also look at his heart rate and analyze the results when he's finished Okay, we're about halfway through the first of these tests, the high cadence one. Sai, doesn't feel natural, I know, but uh, how are you getting on with that 100 RPM? To start with, it was really strange. Now, after a few minutes, I've kind of bedded in. It's more the restrictiveness, you know? I quite like to get out of the seat, but I can't. Essentially, I would never choose this gear for this environment, but it's not too bad. 10 seconds to go now, Sai. Two, one. 10 minutes is done. Right, so he's done his complete 10 minutes at 100 RPM, so he'll have some blood collected now. We'll analyze his breath, but we're not gonna do all the results until we've done the other two tests. We'll give him a bit of rest between. Shh, he's resting now, he will be ready soon. Okay, we've just started the second of our 10 minute intervals. And this time, Sai is going completely on feel. He hasn't got any numbers to look at. He's just at his self-selected cadence, which I can tell you is 90. So, 90? yeah, it's 90. We thought it might be 80, but he seems to be enjoying going at 90. So only 10 beats lower than the one that we did last time. And then in the next one, we'll go down to 60. 50 seconds in, Sai. One, done. Three, two, one, go. Right, Sai has now started a third and final 10 minute block, as you can see at a lower cadence. Uh, given the gear that he's in, that 6% gradient and the 20 k's per hour, it's giving him 61 cadence. So he is currently looking remarkably like Jan Ulrich. We'll see how he's feeling in just a few moments. Right, we're now midway through this final 10 minute test. So you're at around 61 RPM on this one, which is a good 25% below what your self-selected cadence was. How's this feeling? It's weird, like it feels hard when I try and analyse that feeling. My breathing seems the same. There's no more pain in my legs. It's just less comfortable. Oh, it seems like your heart rate at the moment seems to be lower than the other two intervals so far. Well, I'm quite comfortable. So I wonder whether, you know, I'm not using, well, my muscles are working so slowly, and I guess I'm at a power where I'm only using slow twitch fibres. It's just, don't ask me to accelerate. Right, well, you've got four minutes to go. See you in a minute. Don't leave me. <laughs> Two, one, done. Right, it's time to crunch some numbers. If we look at the ones that I recorded on the Garmin, the average heart rate over the last minute of each 10 minute test. For the first one, which was 100 RPM, Simon's average heart rate was 177. For the second one, which was self-selected, which turned out to be 90 RPM, that was 172. And it was exactly the same down at 60 RPM, 172. But Jonathan, please tell us what the results were from a VO2 point of view and the other tests as well. The VO2 is actually fairly, fairly similar between the three tests. If anything, the 100 RPM was slightly lower, around about 49 millilitres per kilogram. And then the 60 RPM and the self-selected were pretty much 50 mils per kilogram, um, just fractionally over that. So there's a fractional difference, but in one subject over that period of time, 
it's nothing we could really say was significant. Right, so nothing too significant there. What about the lactic? Well, the lactate's a little bit surprising, maybe, in that the VO2s being fairly similar, the lactate shows some slight differences. So at the 100 RPM, the lactate was the higher than it has been for all three, and that was 2.8 millimoles. And then the second two, so at 60 and at 60 it was 1.3 millimoles, and then wow. at 90 it was 1.6. So there's quite a big difference there of yeah. over one millimole between the two different, um, three different cadences. Wow, that is quite a big difference. Okay, let's go and talk to Sai, who is just waking up over there and see how he felt for the three different intervals. Right, you've heard the results, Sai. Before we go through them, it is worth stressing once again, if you didn't see the other couple of videos, we do know these aren't officially scientific videos. It is just Sai doing it, or myself doing it on our own, and just doing one test at each. We know that you need to repeat them to get really good results, but the results did seem quite significant and maybe not what we expected once again. That was a low lactate at 60 RPM, 1.3, almost half what you had at 100 RPM. What do you make of that? Well, it's weird, isn't it? Like, if I'd gone into that blind and you'd asked me the same question, I'd have said, without a doubt, 100 RPM was the hardest. Like, I did feel that, that was physically uncomfortable. The perception was 60 to um, my self-selected of 90. It didn't feel like there was any difference. 60 felt a little bit more uncomfortable just because of the greater force I was pushing on the pedals, but it didn't feel like I was working harder. Really interesting just to see that, you know, for me personally at this power, slower pedaling did seem to be better. Yeah, I guess also worth saying that at least from what I've read over recent years, that the higher the power output that you're doing, the higher the efficient cadence should be. So if we look at, say, for example, Chris Hoy back in his heyday, producing an enormous amount of power around the track, he's actually spinning quite a high gear. So perhaps if you're an amateur doing 200 watts versus Bradley Wiggins doing 480, actually you can't copy his cadence because well that's not the most efficient way of doing it absolutely and i think it's also worth mentioning that your cadence is going to vary depending on the gradient as well so for some reason when you're riding on a flat stretch of road your cadence is generally higher than when you're climbing so i think from this we can probably take that actually it's still worth training at different cadences isn't it because you're going to need a different cadence for different situations and if most of your training is done on long climbs then perhaps you're going to suffer on flat roads unless you do a bit of fast pedaling for more GCN Does Science videos, click on me. And yes, Luke, I am your father. <laughs>